I bought one of these Chinese fiber lasers about a month ago to do some marking of anodized aluminum and a little bit of other metal, tool steel, stainless steel, that kind of thing. So this is a 20 watt version. It has a rachis laser source. It has a 150 by 150 millimeter marking area. So it's kind of in the middle. I think the smaller ones are 100 by 100 and the biggest ones are not the biggest, but bigger on average or something like 200 by 200. Uh, one thing that I have read about these is that the larger the marking area, the longer the focal length. So if you do get a 200 by 200, you're going to have to raise that top knob up to, oh, I don't know, quite high and you're gonna lose some of your Z height here. So if you have a real thick part, you're, you're gonna end up having to raise the head up quite a bit. You also may have a little less power with the larger marking area. So 150 by 150 is about six by six inches. And that's kind of in the middle of the range for what you see available on eBay. And so far it seems pretty good for 20 watt. I seem to be able to get a fairly deep mark pretty darn quickly on steel or aluminum. So the type of laser you see here is called a split type. And I guess that just means that this is split from this. Uh, they also sell a cabinet style where you see this base plate mounted directly on sort of this cabinet with a sliding drawer for a keyboard. So the cabinet style didn't appeal to me as much because I didn't want to pay the freight to have it delivered, nor did I want to pay for a computer that I didn't really need as I already have a laptop that I'm not using. It really just connects with a USB cable and that's all you need. So I bought this from eBay for $3,300 and that was delivered from a seller who had it stocked in California. I did quote some prices directly from China through Alibaba and AliExpress, but I found that the prices on average were something like $27 to $2,900. And then that's prior to shipping. And I didn't really want to, one, wait for it to come from China and two, deal with the FDA uh, registration of that company or this product once you actually get it in to import. And I think you also have to pay some duty on this. I don't know what the percent is, but I figured it was pretty much a push at that point. So my choice was to just go with the four day delivery directly from California. And I didn't really have any problems with it, except that it arrives in one of those typical Chinese crates, you know, the cheap plywood with four little plywood stacks of the wood as feet and one of the feet was broken off. So the thing was actually delivered by UPS ground upside down. So that didn't inspire a lot of confidence initially, but ultimately it wasn't an issue. The thing was heavily packed with styrofoam and it seems to be working okay. There was a little bit of damage when I did receive it. It was to this key switch right here. The key was just broken off inside the switch. So I just had to take these four screws out on the front, or I guess six screws out on the front of the machine pop the front off and there's a little plastic castle nut that's typical for switches. You take that out and pop the key through the front. So the unit basically comes as you see it here, pretty much assembled and ready to go. All you have to do is plug the power cord into the back of the machine and into the wall. I didn't have to deal with any transformers because I bought this from the US, so they probably expect it for the US market and it's not 220, it's just 110. So other than actually plugging the thing into the wall, you do have to plug the USB cable into the computer and you have to install one driver for uh, what they call the JCZ board. So to power on the laser, all you do is turn this and sometimes on some models, this is an e-stop rather than a key, but same thing, it's just a switch. Hit the master switch, hit the laser switch. And with the laser switch, you can hear the laser source inside have the fans power up. And then importantly, you take off the lens cover, otherwise you'll burn right through it. So you can see there's a little red dot right down on the base plate there. So additional to the main unit here and the scanning head, you get a manual that's all right in Chinese, half in Chinese. It's, it's okay. You get a couple Allen wrenches, a screwdriver, a power cord, you know, some of that kind of stuff. Nothing really critical. These Allen wrenches are what you're gonna use to uh, loosen. There are four socket head cap screws underneath this head here, and you'll just loosen those and slide it back a little bit so it's roughly centered on this grid. What I did was I added these parallels. These are just machinist parallels, and I just added them right to the grid and then I can load and unload parts very quickly. If I'm gonna mark, you know, 100 of something, I can easily load five at a time, as long as they are, you know, rectangular, square, something like that, and they can meet the grid. Uh, the grid is just M6 by 1.0 screw threads. To set up my parallels and find the position of the head, I went in here and opened EasyCAD. And let's get a little closer view. So I went to the computer. I already had the driver installed. I opened EasyCAD, and if you have any problem with your connection of EasyCAD or your USB connection or the driver, it's going to come up and say 
cannot find dog, which I assume means dongle, you just fix it, you know, take this out, put it back in, or go to the device manager and reinstall the driver. It'll work. It'll say, if it doesn't work, it'll, it'll say this program is in the demo state. If it does work, you'll see what you're seeing now. To set up my grid and to set up the position of this head, all I did was go into EasyCAD, choose the polygon tool, draw a square, and go over to the size, which I'll try to show you on the actual computer. And you just change that to the you know, maximum marking area you have. In my case, it's 150 by 150 millimeters. Press apply. So I hit the little A with the magnifying glass here to resize my 150 by 150 millimeter box to fit the canvas or the viewing area. And then I select this little crosshair right below the big H on the uh, ribbon up here to send this part directly to the origin. So the center of this should be at the origin of the canvas. So I'm assuming that's roughly gonna be in the center of my marking area. Now, if I go to the bottom of EasyCAD here to this light button that says F1, if I hit that, I should see a square being produced on the grid. And you can roughly see how I set up my parallel. So I tried to line up the edge of this parallel with straight, as straight as possible with the line of this. And you'll notice it gets kind of skewed out toward the edges. Do make sure when you move the position of this head by loosening these four bolts, Underneath the column, there's just four socket head cap screws that allow you to shift the position of the head in the light path. And if you don't tighten those all the way down, you're going to get bad markings and you won't realize it until you have terrible markings and you've already scrapped some of your parts. So I'm just going to press stop in EasyCAD now and we're back to that. So that's kind of how the preview works. It'll show exactly what you're uh, looking at. So if that was text, it would show text and I can show an example of that real quick. Here's the word text. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. Oh, it's been rotated, whatever. Let's see what it looks like. So that's a little tough to see, but you can zoom in a little bit. You can see that it's showing the word text. It's rotated because I did that, but that's okay. So you can see that's kind of how it predicts where it's gonna mark, and it's pretty true to where it shows up. I mean, maybe within a couple thousandths, something like that. So the EasyCAD software is pretty easy to use. You can draw polygons or text, and you can use outline only mode or hatch mode if you want the thing to be filled or if you want it to be just an outline. You can do JPEGs in any raster images. Uh, vector images are probably a heck of a lot faster in this, but you can do anything like that. You can export DWGs of a sketch directly out of SolidWorks or directly out of Fusion 360. And I find that that works really well and all you have to do is make sure it's in millimeter mode because EasyCAD doesn't handle inches at all and it doesn't seem to scale things up correctly either but as long as you export it in millimeters you're fine. So I wanted to give a quick demonstration of how you set the focal length or how you find the focal length of this laser. So this is one way to find the focal length of the laser. All you do is you get some text or a picture or something that you can repeatedly mark on your screen in EasyCAD and press the F1 light button and get it to show up. Get some sacrificial piece of material unless you don't mind marking directly on the base. I would prefer to mark on this piece of aluminum that's been anodized, but it's scrapped to me. I'm just gonna shove it right up to the edge of my parallels. I can see that it's right there. And all I'm gonna do is, it doesn't matter where this head is, but we're going to eventually come all the way up and all the way down. So you can either start from high or you can start from very low and you're just gonna choose the mark continuous button. All you're gonna do now is make sure that your text is where you want it. If it's not, you can drag it with the mouse or you can use the arrow keys to position it. I'm gonna move that down just a little bit. So I'm just going to press mark and it'll start marking. And it's trying to mark, but nothing's happening because I'm way too high. So I'm just gonna keep moving the head down and down until I hear it start to mark. And it should be pretty audible and you could also probably see the effect. There it is. You can hear it get louder and louder, and then you can sort of hear it get a little bit quieter as you pass. So then you need to back up and go to the loudest point. And this is something you can play with over time. So I'll stop it. Don't be afraid if that mark is terrible because it's not going to be in focus. This is actually a eight millimeter thick part. So if I found my zero point, or if I said that was zero for eight millimeters, I could just walk down eight millimeters on my scale. So 
just for the sake of simplicity, for my purposes, what I did was, I'll show you, let me grab the camera. I chose to just use a Sharpie and put a little dot right on this scale. You can see it right there next to the indicator. And that's my zero point. So that's effectively marking directly on this base plate. So all I do, let me put the camera back. If I have a new part and I already have my zero point, so I'm gonna just go right to zero. Let's say I wanted to mark this one, two, three block. This is one inch thick. I just take any caliper, any digital caliper, or not digital, vernier, or whatever. Just measure it. I'm gonna work in millimeters just because the scale is in centimeters and that's gonna be simpler. So 25.35, let's say 25. 25 to 25 and a half will be fine. So I wanna go from my mark and I wanna add 25. So there's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then I've already added two, so I'm gonna subtract a little bit. That should be pretty close. I won't worry about getting it exact for this demonstration. So I'm gonna light it, and you can see it's marking way off on the top. I'm gonna to move it down with the arrow keys just so we can see where it marks. And I'm gonna leave the settings the same. I think we are at 20 kilohertz and power is at 50%. It's going to mark at 500 millimeters per second. Let's just leave the settings there for now. Let's see if we got our focal length even close to correct. Press stop, press mark F2, and we're not going to do continuous this time because I just want it to run once. So I'll press mark. And there you have it. It says one, two, three. Pretty close not too difficult so I probably have roughly two or three hours of marking time on this laser quite a bit more run time but the actual laser on marking time is probably about two to three hours haven't really had any issues with it yet it's done what it was supposed to do I guess I don't have any complaints about it so if you're gonna buy one from eBay I guess that should inspire a little bit of confidence you can ask me questions if I've skipped anything or if there's anything important that you want to know let me know in the comments